Apollo. Apollo was the most beautiful of the gods. His hair was dark gold, his eyes stormy blue. He wore a tunic of golden panther skin, carried his golden bow, and wore a quiver of golden arrows. His chariot was beaten gold. Its horses were white with golden manes and flame-colored eyes. He was god of the sun always. Later, he became patron of music, poetry, mathematics, and medicine. And later, when he was a mature god, he preached moderation. He bade his worshippers to look first into their own hearts and find there the beginnings of wisdom and to conduct themselves prudently in all things. But in his youth, he did many cruel and wanton deeds. Several times he was almost expelled from the company of the gods by Zeus, whom he had angered with his wild folly. As soon as he was given his bow and arrows, he raced down from Olympus to hunt the python who had hunted his mother. Dryads, who are tattletales, told him he could find his enemy at Mount Parnassus. There he sped. As he stood on a hill, he saw the great serpent weaving its dusty coils far below. He notched an arrow, drew his bow, and let fly. It darted like light. He saw it strike, saw the huge coils flail in agony. Shouting with savage glee, he raced down the slope. But when he got there, he found the serpent gone. It had left a trail of blood, which he followed to the oracle of Mother Earth at Delphi. Python was hiding in a cave where he could not be followed. Apollo breathed on his arrowheads and shot them into the cave as fast as he could. They broke into flames when they hit. Smoke filled the cave and the serpent had to crawl out. Apollo, standing on a rock, shot him so full of arrows he looked like a porcupine. He skinned the great snake and saved the hide for a gift. Now, it was a sacred place where he had done his killing. Here lived the oracles of Mother Earth, whom the gods themselves consulted. They were priestesses, trained from infancy. They chewed laurel, built fire of magic herbs, and sat in the smoke, which threw them into a trance, wherein they saw, and told in riddles, what was to come. Knowing that he had already violated a shrine, Apollo thought he might as well make his deed as large as possible and claimed the oracles for his own, bidding them to prophesy in his name. When Mother Earth complained to Zeus about the killing of her python, Apollo smoothly promised to make amends. He instituted annual games at Delphi in celebration of his victory, and these he graciously named after his enemy, calling them the Pythian Games, and he named the oracles Pythonesses. Less excusable was Apollo's treatment of a satyr named Marcius. This happy fellow had the misfortune to be an excellent musician, a realm Apollo considered his own, and where he would brook no rivalry. Hearing the satyr praise too often, Apollo invited him to a contest. The winner was to choose a penalty to which the loser would have to submit, and the muses were to judge. So Marcius played his flute, and Apollo played his lyre. They played exquisitely. The muses could not choose between them. Then Apollo shouted, Now you must turn your instrument upside down and play and sing at the same time. That is the rule. I go first. Thereupon the god turned his lyre upside down and played and sang a hymn praising the gods, and especially their beautiful daughters, the muses. But you cannot play a flute upside down, and certainly cannot sing while playing it. So Marcius was declared the loser. Apollo collected his price. He flayed Marcius alive and nailed his skin to a tree. A stream gushed from the tree's roots and became a river. On the banks of that river grew reeds, which sang softly when the wind blew. People call the river Marcius, and that is still its name.